Good day, folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Welcome to another Twinkle Tips Friday video. And we have something very nifty that we want to share with you. It piggybacks on last week's message, but it also answers a couple questions. Let's get right to it. Welcome back, guys. So what I want to do today is I want to kind of build a, a, a little scene for you and show you how groups can be set up in your layout. Now, um, if you build the groups correctly or, well, let's let's take that word correctly and throw it away. Because in X-Lights, you can do anything you want to do. And it's usually not wrong or right, it's a personal preference. So most anything you want to do can be done, and there are different ways to accomplish this. So I don't want you to see what I'm doing as this is the only way to do it or the right way to do it, but what I want you to learn today is how we can kind of organize our groups or the models that are in our groups rather, so that we get better results when we're sequencing or maybe even mapping. So let's go ahead, I, let's show you uh, on the blank canvas here um, what, I'm, what I'm talking about. So I want to create just a couple of, let's say a couple arches, right? And I'm just gonna make one arch, I'm gonna hit Control C, Control V on my keyboard. There we go, got a bunch of arches, right? Now I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna move this all the way over here and I'm gonna select them all. Now this is in another video, this is alignment. I've got a bunch of arches here. I want to distribute them. I s click and drag, select them all, right click, and I want to uh, distribute them horizontally. Okay, we want them a little further apart. Some of that one over there, we'll distribute it horizontally again so they're not overlapping. There we go, and let's align, right click, align to the bottom. So there we go, we have a bunch of arches straight up above me there. If we wanted to create a group, there's a couple ways that we can do that. We can come over here and we can right click and we can add an empty group and we can, let's and let's go ahead and do that. Right click, add group, and we'll call these arches. And now if we kind of uh, make this a little bit bigger, if we look down here, we have the selection dialog down here when we have the group selected. Now, if you just grab these any way you like, and you apply an odd numbered order. Instead of them being one through six, you put them in different orders and you save that group. And if we come in, I want you to see what exactly happens when you create this group and you put a single strand effect across this group. I want you to see what happens. So if we put A for arch there, you can see that it looks like it's bouncing straight across there, right? But there's some other interesting things that maybe you aren't aware of, that if you go into the layer setting panel and uh, you go in and you change the default setting from render style to something different, let's say horizontal stacked. Look how the order that the arches are getting the effect placed over top of them is different than if it were the default. Um, and this is why it's important to really zero in on when you build your groups that you consider how you've built them because when you import a sequence and somebody sequenced at the group level, this might become an issue for you whenever you go to uh, transpose the sequencing that you're pulling in. It also might make a difference when you're sequencing on your own layout if you're trying to do different things with these different render styles, and there's a number of them. Uh, now, most of them all work. We go per model default. They're all going to do about the same thing just because that's what you've set them up to do. And uh, you can, let's see, uh, let's try a couple other ones. Horizontal per model. And that is a, a chase, every uh, a chase, number of chases two. We'll, we'll change it to one chase. See how it's chasing itself haphazardly. So it's not chasing itself in a, in a direct line. It's going kind of haphazardly. So, and I, for example, I use the horizontal per model uh, render style a, a significant number of times. So I have even an odd uh, 
arches lit up and then I can do other things on the other arches in the groups. Um, but if we go back to the layout here, there's a couple things that you can do to fix this. And these are some of the things that you might consider. So if we go here and we hover over top of this group, we selected the group and we come over here and we right click and it, see how it says sort by name. Well, if we sort it by name, now look what happens. We have arches, arches two, three, four, five, and six. So by number, it's numerically ordered them by the number that it is. We'll go ahead and click save, and we'll go ahead and hit render all because we've changed the buffer. Everything's different. So now, if we have this horizontal per model, it should walk right on down the line. And uh, if you do skips, you can do skips. So let's add a couple of advances. Uh, let's say a number of advances like five. So now you see how it's going every other one. And it's jumping back and forth. And it's skipping every other one because that's what we said. Band size is one. Skip size is one. So, uh, oh, we could double up and see now it's doing that kind of a thing there. And this is what's fun about using the render styles. But if you don't take the time to uh, set your group up in a specific order, whenever you do import things, things will come across as different. All right, so let's look at another example where uh, this could be quite problematic and why it's kind of important to know this ahead of time as you build your groups and you set things up. Let's go into the model download and I am going to look for, let's see, uh, spinner. And let's go into the uh, decor. I we'll go into this this 22 inch spinner or 23 inch spinner. So one of the things that you may consider is some of these models have sub models. And if we click on the little carrot here and we we open up open that up, and you can see that it says spoke number one, spoke number two, spoke number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, kind of weird looking ten there, and then your eleven and twelve. If we were going to create a group with those submodels in mind, uh, we could also do it this way. So this is kind of how you build groups, but we could also select these groups, uh, select these, um, excuse me, submodels by uh, selecting the top one there, spoke one, and I'll scroll down to spoke number 12, and I'll hold the shift key down. That selects them. Now I can right click and I can, um, create group from these selections. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll call these spinner arms. Okay. And I'll go ahead and get rid of this. Now I want you, again, I want you to notice that those were in order from one to 12. And if you're already thinking ahead at exactly what I'm going to say, um, then you're going to know that if these were haphazardly out of order, and, and I'm mixing them up here. And we go in and we start looking at our sequencer here. Let me go ahead and throw this uh, over here, the spinner that adds it to your, to your preview screen. And we go ahead and we do a, uh, another, uh, another version of this. You can see how that's very haphazard. It's not exactly here. Band size is two, skip size is, I'm sorry, band size is one, skip size is one. There should be every other arm lit up and then a blank one. Uh, and, and, and that quite simply is not the case. Now, if you have these groups already created in your show, hopefully this is something that you can pick up, come back over here, now that you know that this can actually be an issue, you can select it, right click and sort by name. And now it's one through 12 again, click save. Let's go back. Let's re-render the sequence. And now we should see it as arms going in a specific direction. This is going one way and there's a skip between all of them and everything seems to work out just fine. Well, guys, I hope you liked this video. This actually, I, I want to give a shout out to Douglas, uh, who who suggested a few more videos like this. There, I could I could pack a ton into these little videos, the Twinkle Tip Friday videos on the groups. If you want more, I mean, just let me know in the comments. Douglas is the one who commented last week on the Twinkle Tip Friday video, and he suggested something like this. But I also want to give a shout out to Alan. He's in our PPU Facebook group. Link is in the video description as well. And Alan asked a really good question, uh, and I'm going to address it here today because 
uh, it is a great question. Who has made some of these models uh, that we're finding in the X-Lights download? And to be honest, some of these models have been around for a significant number of years. In fact, many of the models that you see in the model download, like you saw there, we pulled that spinner from Boscoyo, and you'll notice that those models have been created and they look maybe not so perfect or they they could look better uh maybe some of them the sub models don't particularly make sense or they don't work right well just keep in mind that a lot of those models have been created by the users in the community and shared back with the original uh vendor because well let's face it uh, when you're really good at something, you're really good at that something. And so I give a lot of credit to uh, James at Boscoyo. I give credit to Jason over at uh, Gilbert Engineering. And the same for Jackie uh, at EFL and uh, Charlie's Props and so forth. These guys really know how to cut Coro. And I just want to say I appreciate everything that everybody has done to build those models and help out the community. So if you do have models and they're not in the model download, maybe consider getting in touch with some of the uh, vendors that we ta already mentioned and let them know, hey, here's a model for this, go ahead and use this, or I worked really hard here, check out my model, make sure it looks good, and you can put it up on the website. Guys, that's everything I have for you today. I hope this video was helpful, informative, and saved you a little bit of time and frustration. Uh, if you liked the video, please give us a huge thumbs up. If you haven't done yet so, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget the bell for notifications so you never miss one of our awesome Twinkle to Friday videos or any of the other videos that we put out. Uh, we'll also have a uh, webinar coming up this week. Every Tuesday we get together in our Tuesday night Zoom room, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, that is. And you're welcome to join us. Sometimes it's a webinar like it is this week. And other times it's an open mic night where we will do uh, just open uh, Q&A sessions to help answer your questions live. And they also help me come up with great content that I can produce here for everybody in YouTube and in the community. So guys, thank you for joining us. If you appreciate the things we do here at Pixel Pro Displays, please consider joining the PPD Sequence Club where we do one awesome sequence each and every month and, and you get a choice of three different songs. We do one new one. We're, we're actually gonna do two new ones uh, coming up already planned, already planned on two new ones for uh, March. Holy cow, March is coming. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye for now. Good evening. It's not evening. It's daytime. And let's say you add four skips in there. See how it's going to go every... Uh, whoop. I give credit to Jason uh, at, at uh, um, uh, 